In last week's episode, our team worked for two days to cut a portage up and over a mountain in order to get around a massive canyon with two waterfalls. Now back at the river, our team is eager to put the paddles back in the water as there's still some work to be done before arriving at the town of Aguanish. Welcome to the Land of Wild Rivers. morning guys it's day 28 slash day 12 and the Sun is out last night it was kind of a scramble to get everything under the tarp because as soon as we finished this portage we had a quick celebration and then it started downpouring again but today the Sun is out we're drying off our clothes maybe a little later morning this morning we have a full day of paddling and a large portion of that's gonna be more white water to run which is great we're all happy to get back on the river after going on a two-day hike <laughs> and uh, possibly, crossing our fingers, draw out some clothes. This morning I crawled out of the tent, no campfire, and just butt naked and just put on all my soaking wet clothes from yesterday. And now wow, you can see man. some dry patches starting to form. We're not fully there yet, and I'm definitely feeling a lot better now than I was maybe an hour ago when I put these on. This is amazing. There's so much power in the water. So this right here is one of the two waterfalls that we have been busting our asses to portage around the last 48 hours, the last two days. And uh, not not a foot was walked on that portage trail that wasn't cut by us, except, well, I guess except for the final, final stretch. But we had to pretty much cut our own path up and over that mountain. And to be standing here right now looking at the, one of the reasons why we were portaging around pretty beautiful and uh, it's kind of a nice reward at the end of all of that.
stretch here. So we've had an awesome morning so far today, getting to run some really fun rapids, which I think we've earned every single set that we've been able to hit, coming out of two days of hiking over the mountain around the canyon. So uh, it's been really awesome getting to hit some white water and, uh, and get some kilometers under us because it was getting a little ridiculous going 900 meters a day. We are just cruising along the entire river as a swift and we're tracking at about 10 kilometers an hour. Pretty chill day, and the sun's coming out every once in a while. We are cooking right now though. Without even paddling. Made it to camp. Yes, sir. We've got sun, so we can dry stuff. We have wind, which will both dry stuff and keep the bugs down. And we arrived at camp a little bit early today, allowing us to do all of these things. So uh, it's sometime around 5 p.m., maybe 5:30 Eastern. So we have uh, lots of time left in the eve. And as you can see behind me here, we've got the tent set up. And we've got a lot of items out just drying along the ground. So we also have a very cool stream, or sorry, I should say river in the background, but a seam of deep current and quick current that we're gonna go for a swim in while the sun's still out. So we have a lot of things planned for the evening, but uh, it's another beautiful night out here on the Aguaniche. It is the night of day 28 for Matt and myself. This is all of our second last camp night. And looking at the weather, it looks like we might have rain for the rest of the trip uh, starting tomorrow afternoon. And yeah, it's pretty bittersweet. Uh, it still doesn't really feel like the trip is getting close to the end. We've been out here for a long time. Uh, I started developing like after like three weeks or so you start developing like habits out here Which is pretty crazy and even the beginning of the trip seems like a like a, a long time ago But we're just enjoying this last little 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 bit of sunlight in one of our last campsites of this amazing trip down this amazing river the Agoniche River in Cote Nord, Quebec Beautiful scenery good friends good white water and some gnarly portages we're just taking it in tonight, relaxing. All right, so for Alex and myself, we have a mixer of Uncle Ben's rice, and we're mixing that with uh, we're mixing that with some chili, and then we have some leftover Parmesan. So I actually just put basically half of this thing in the in the uh, the little medley here. And I, I put it over some, some light heat and it's just melted in there. So we have some melted Parmesan 
in this medley. And I, I think uh, I think it's gonna be really good. And maybe if uh, when Noah's not looking, I might take some of his hot sauce too, and I'll put that on there. As well. Oh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that out loud? What do you got going on over here? Just a little spaghetti dinner, but with rotini instead of spaghetti noodles. Oh, oh fun! And a little bit of parmesan. Parmigiano. We don't know if this is actually parmesan from the community of parmesan in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> it might be that fake stuff. What's the other stuff called? Padano. Padano. It might be Padano. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot for not bringing hot sauce. We brought that Northern Lights one last time and it was like yeah. so clutch. Yeah. But that... This is so good, Matt. Wasting time. My home in Toronto Headed to the GPRA Cause I got nothing to live for Nothing's gonna come my way Sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay Good morning. It's day 29 out here, and it feels surreal. As you guys know, I love geology, and as we paddle, I always try to figure out how things work in terms of the landscape. And where we're camping is really cool because there's this eroding bank, and it's almost like a slice, and you can really see what has happened over the last thousands, millions of years. And here on this wall, you can see where all the trees grow on the top organic matter, then you have sand and you have clay. And what is really cool is we're off, we're on a tributary of the main river and during the spring melt when there's a pulse of energy of, of all this water coming down, it, what we're standing on is actually underwater. And the energy is strong enough that it moves all these rocks and pushes it into this tributary. But what's cool is as the tributary extends, the energy of this pulse weakens. And farther down this river, there's less of this cobble. Right here, you could see all the rocks along this wall. But as you go farther down, um, all the rocks taper off and just the sand. So seeing this, you know during the spring melt, the energy pulses all the gravel here, but it doesn't have enough energy to continue the pulse farther down this tributary. This is... Uh most likely our last full day in the river. We looked at the forecast this morning and next couple days jam packed with like heavy, heavy rain. Uh, there's around six big features of waterfalls that we want to actually get like through today so that uh, the rocks aren't super slippery. So after that, we're gonna set ourselves up nice around 10, 15 kilometers to the town of Aganish. Hopefully we can get some, uh, some sun tomorrow morning, have a nice final breakfast with the boys, crush the next 10, 15 kilometers out. That's the play for the next 48 hours. And it really starts with a big day today, looking to get around 40 kilometers uh, down the river. So stay tuned. We got to this section of the river where there's a series of chutes and we're gonna slowly take our time and get over each one of them. There's steep terrain, we gotta work as a team to get the canoes down because we're precariously walking along the rock ledge beside the waterfall. We just finished our first of four portages today and we can already see the next waterfall up ahead. very windy out here right now. 
and we are expecting to get hit by a storm any minute. We're just trying to get all these portages done before we get smoked. Because these rocks would be a lot less fun to walk on when they're wet. We just banged out the four waterfalls, had a quick lunch, and the rain is about to start. So we're very happy we got off those slippery rocks before they got even more slippery. We got about 15 kilometers of paddling before the next obstacle. Let's get this done. So there's four like back to back, and then there's 15K. And then, and then what's after that, the 15K? A couple more, like just things. I, don't, I, I can't remember exactly what they are. Uh, like, yeah, we'd be at 28, and by the end, we'll be at 20. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Bro, this is an eight kilometer... <laughs> this is an eight kilometer stretch of flappage right Maybe now. Maybe six or seven, actually. We're about to get clapped for an hour. Like, six, 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 six. Yeah, yeah. We've been raining on us for a couple hours, and we've had a headwind this entire time. And we now have a six kilometer straightaway that goes right to the heart of the storm and the wind. We've got to dig deep, keep paddling, focus on the end. How about those headwinds, boys? What headwind? Oh, we got a tailwind. Shorty's a window shopper. We are almost at 40 kilometers for the day. We've been banging off portages in the rain, Left trying not to slip on the rocks. Beautiful scenery, lots of rapids here. Too big for us, maybe for a kayaker. And uh, we're getting to the end of the day. 
We're all stoked. We have about 10 kilometers left of this Agonish River Agonish. by the end of the day. Agonish. Crazy to think, but we're almost there. We made it to our final campsite of this trip. This is about a 12 hour day on the water. We got about 40 kilometers. We did four, five, six, we did seven portages today. Big day on the water, but we got ourselves in striking distance to finish this trip tomorrow. We're about 10K from the finish. We got here right when the sun is setting. Gonna have a quick boil up. Hopefully it's not gonna rain on us. Eat dinner, go to bed. My cups are absolutely soaked. Yeah, cups are the worst. <coughs> I'm debating just getting right out of these dry pants. I know, I've debated that a few times. Yeah, I just like it. don't know if it's the time yet. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what rain. are you waiting for? It could rain. What if the skies open up? Yo, if it rains, I'm going in the tent. Yeah, but there's chores to do. I'm not feeding do. you Which, in the tent. That's fine. <laughs> I'm literally just going to go in the tent. <laughs> <laughs> I just won't eat. Alex, can you bring me a little bowl of cheesy beef? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Alex, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Bring my food to the tent. Bring the salvageable for a boil. Oh, there. Oh. We hit that massive They get through the language I speak, but it's usually wrong. Yeah, like, oh, like, they I know, sometimes I need to filter it. <laughs> you need to go into the intention. When he speaks, he's actually speaking deeper than, you, than surface level, you know? The alternate dimension, yeah. that's left and right. Yeah. It is day 30 and it is our final day on the river. We're packing up camp for the final time. It's always one of those moments after, at the end of a trip, you are excited to go home to see your family and friends and get back to real life. But there is that, that feeling of, of losing your, uh, your lifestyle out here which is a combination of feeling free and just traveling and just living off the land in a very nice way. This has been a river I've been looking at for about two years now. And it was one of those trips that there's a lot of uncertainty with because there's not a lot of information. Uh, there's a lot of big white water, big portages, just big country out here. And coming to this trip, I was a little uncertain with our ability to actually do it in completion. 
tons of up and down. Like the whole the whole trip was just a roller coaster of highs and lows. Um, and through all that, I think I, I I did gain a better sense of how far I could push myself mentally and physically. Uh, and, and I really surprised myself on how I was able to kind of grow through the trip from those like initial challenges in the early days to some of the, the final uh, things like the canyon portage. I took out of it a real sense of my ability to deal with uncertainty. When there is an obstacle and, and you have no choice but to go through it, you're given no choice but to actually like face it and take it one step at a time, you can do it and you lean on the people around you and, and, and like as humans we come together to make it actually work. This river blew me away, just some of the mountainous terrain, having to climb some mountains, um, just it was absolutely beautiful out here. Every corner has its, has a new experience. There's a there's mountain. The mountains just jet out from the side of the river. Big white water, big country, lots of wildlife. It's Cote Nord is a beautiful place, and it's a beautiful river. And we had a beautiful trip. Uh, I really had never done an extended canoe trip before. Uh, I think my longest trip prior to this one was four days long, and I was jumping up to a 30-day trip. So I was. I was pretty nervous, I knew I could handle the sort of wilderness living situation, but just the extended time away from home, uh, I was nervous as to how I would handle that. And then this is just such so much bigger country, it's so much more rugged, the challenges are so much bigger. I was really unsure of like how I would handle that, so a big part of going on this trip for me was to, it was almost like a test for myself to see like how I would handle these. And uh, I definitely learned a ton. We couldn't have had a better team to pull this off. You know, it was awesome for me to get to do another trip with Eric. We got to conquer some more whitewater. Uh, Matt and I, after just meeting him online and not knowing what he was gonna be like, and then getting to blaze through a forest with him, it was like very cool to, to get to work together like that. And then also just reconnecting with my childhood brother, Noah, who we haven't seen each other for like a, a year and a half. So uh, from that perspective as well, it was, it was pretty cool to be able to uh, to have a team like this and for us to be able to reconnect as well so and reconnect on a trip like this so I uh, can't think of a better way for that to happen. Right, the camaraderie that you feel like these guys feel like my brothers we, we've been out here for two weeks and like um, we've quite literally been in life and death situations and, and we've, we've done it together um, and it's just amazing uh, in my opinion what what a group of guys can do. It's really hard to find someone who you can do a big trip with and get through all the controversy and hardships with. To make a trip like this work, teamwork is so important and we are so lucky to have a team that was able to pull through and get the job done. Just all around love for the boys. Couldn't have been a better group of guys to spend uh, the last two weeks with, so overall, just, just super happy with how the trip went and it was a great experience. It's been an awesome trip. I think the Aguaniche really gave us everything we could have asked for out here. So we are currently walking what we thought was a nice clear portage trail for the third time. Because we got out to a bog, we turned around, came back, and now we are walking it again. Someday, we will be done this portage. But for now, the Aguaniche is holding on to us as long as it can. All right, so we have arrived at a one kilometer portage. We we're within 10 kilometers from the end of the trip. And there is a nice clear trail for us to follow and we couldn't be more thankful. The team is just getting warmed up right now, and then we are going to be doing this portage. Let me show this how yeah, I yeah. hit my glutes. What's up? So catch me outside. Catch how me about outside that? On that portage, yeah. It's a kilometer long, but we like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little glute activation, maybe. Hey, you know, this is a one kilometer portage, but, but after that 2.5 kilometer bushwhack, this is gonna be like a breeze for us.
Good luck, brother. Cloud berries, bro. Come find out. Whoa. We found some cloud berries along this very boggy portage that we're crossing right now. And it's really turned it around for us. So it is currently 12.15 in the afternoon, Eastern, and uh, I think we thought we'd be pulling up into the town of Aguinish at this point, but instead we are portaging through a very big bog uh, around what was marked on a map as a 1k portage. And I think the Aguinish has one, had this one last little surprise for us today. We thought the portage was one way and um, there didn't seem to be anything. The forest was very, very thick. So we started following a bog uh, around the thick forest to see if we can get on the outside. So the 1K portage automatically turns into a 1.5 to a two kilometer portage. And now we're trying to get back to the river and uh, we are in it right now. We are definitely in it. Definitely threw a curveball for us today, thinking we'd be back in town sipping on some craft beers. And uh, we're not. Not yet, not yet anyways. Sometime though we will. At one point we will be sipping craft beers. But right now we stand in the rain. <laughs> it just might not be today. <laughs> it might not be today. It might not be today. <laughs> I'm feeling about as wonderful as you can feel while being trapped in a bog. Yeah. Do you feel trapped in here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 200 percent I feel trapped. I'm off it. I'm off it. I want to walk there. I want to blaze a trail for the freaking 90th time on this trip. I'm gonna get to the river. I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> Just want to get to the river. I know we already did the ending sequence, but we took a portage that was supposed to be a kilometer, but it ended up being three kilometers and it took five hours. But we're here now, the Agunish needed one more uh, crazy section for us to deal with, until the next one.
This trip was a bag of mixed nuts. That's it. That's all I had. <laughs> <laughs>